Manus flat on the canvas. We are ready to rock and roll. Second round of action. There is a cut on Manus. Yeah. It's Jack. My man B Hop got knocked out, dropped out the ring last night. I need a little judo baby. I need me a little judo baby. And let's do it, Ron. Let's do it. You see what failed me next? You got face for me, too. I got face for me. That's nice. Martial arts. Chat. Martial arts. Chat. Martial arts. Chat. Martial arts. Chat. about for a long time and envisioning uh, the atmosphere was certainly electric in there tonight. Give me an idea of, of just how the moment played out versus your expectations. Uh, I, th I think I've done everything right. Uh, choosing me walkout music to, to get you know my people in that type of I don't know mindset, cheer and chanting. And I just had to take a moment before you know like I actually stepped in the octagon to just like be like, oh, this is my moment, you know. So uh, it was a very proud moment for me coming from Liverpool as well. Very nice. Internet's going crazy right now, fans, media, everybody's trying to debate the score and, you know, what it was. Give me an idea. I mean, were, were you and your team scoring it round by round? You know, how did you have it going? What did you think when it came time to read the decision? It's, listen, uh, it's a close fight. It was, it, was, it was a close fight. People are going to want to say that he won, <clears throat> and people say that I won. I couldn't care less. You know, I, I got the decision. It was a really, really close fight. He's the most trickiest fighter I've ever, I've ever fought. I think he was shocked because he thought, like, I'm an aggressive fighter, and I am, but I knew against him I had to be very different and use all my smarts, so it was, it was a hard, hard fight, you know, very close, very close. And lastly for me, I mean, you've been incredibly apologetic about missing weight, and, but you haven't really talked about it much, and I don't know if you didn't want to get into it before the fight, but, you know, Dana was in here earlier, and he said, listen, I'm not upset, he has an excuse, he knows what happened, I mean, there was a very good reason, yeah. I don't want to talk about it, that's for him to talk about, I mean, can you help us understand? I mean, I know some of it may be personal, but because I think everybody's just trying to understand exactly what happened, why you came in, you know, needed extra time, and then missed by so much, you know? Uh, I think the thing is, mate, I'm not on to sit here and make excuses no matter what happened. I missed weight. Uh, I can't do anything about it. Uh, I, I missed weight. I, I, the night of uh, having to cut weight, I had some, some problems to attend to while I was cutting weight, so I attended to them. But listen, there's no fucking excuses for missing weight. I missed weight. And, and, and it is what it is. I know people are going to want to throw around now, like, oh, you know, he still took the... F it was three fucking pounds. We're fighting here, it was three pounds. And I, I, listen, I'm not trying to, like, make out that I, I'm the good person, but it was three pounds. Stephen was going to take the fight no matter what. Three pounds. No, it's, it's his coaches and management to then look after him as best, and that's what they done. They made me weigh in, a, you know, the day very light, and they took 30%. And, and, and that's what comes with not making weight. I never made weight. No excuses, do you know what I mean? But it's not like it changed anything in the fight. Three pounds won't change nothing. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. If I'd made weight, no one would have said anything. But I didn't make weight, and I'm, I'm truly embarrassed by it. There's no excuses. I didn't make weight. Darren, you said in the cage after the fight that you didn't necessarily deserve a title shot next. <clears throat> How far away do you think you are now? I couldn't care less, mate. Uh, I think Stephen deserves the, the, I go with the interim more than I do myself. I know, I, you know, I've just beat him in a close fight, but g give it to Stephen. He made weight and he's, he, he's still number one and beat some more guys than me, so I'll give it to him. <laughs> Listen, mate, I'm a realist. I'm not going to sit here and, and bullshit anyone. I'm never going to bullshit myself. I'm certainly not going to bullshit you, so give it to Stephen. I, I'm just going to go and train, you know. I'm going to go on the air this week and then I'm going to train Monday. You changed up your walkout music. Yeah. It worked. Of course. Um, is that, if, is, if you've found something that you're going to stick with now, and what was the thought process behind changing it? I, no, I might not change it. I don't know. I'm not like a superstitious guy. I don't think, oh, I have to have the same. Like, I know some fighters think everything has to be the same, but I just knew for that type of crowd, that type of tune would work. And, and, and I know that all you guys seen it here. It, I, I don't think scenes like that they have only been seen before in Dublin, I suppose. So... You know, I looked over at one point and Dana had a big smile on his face. So I, I feel like I was very intelligent with me walk up music. And I wanted to be. I wanted to have a good moment. It's, it's never been to Liverpool. so. And Dana says he's taking you to Vegas next. Well, we'll see. I, I want to bring it to Anfield. <laughs> so, why? <clears throat> America's amazing. I've never fought there. 
the pay-per-views and then we all know Las Vegas and Madison Square Garden. But why, why can't I be the guy to, to bring the UFC to an arena, a stadium here, here in England, here in Liverpool? Why can't I do that? Why? Who's telling me I can't? It, do you know what I mean? It doesn't matter who you are. I'll say fuck you, and and I don't care. It, to me, I want I want a stadium event to happen, a pay per view at Anfield. That that I've had the dream of the Echo. That's that's been done now. Now it's Anfield. So, you know, Dana's the boss, but manifestation. That's what it's all about. Darren, congratulations on a very composed performance after a difficult couple of days. Um. Just going back over that point that, that Simon mentioned there about Dana, he categorically said you're going to America next. Yeah. He's just been in here. Um, we've seen great occasions, though, when British fighters have gone to Vegas and there is clearly about 10,000 people that would travel over there with you. Yeah. And it goes down in history in America. And it's strange to hear you say you are going to refuse it from them. No, I'm not going to refuse it. If Dana says, Dan, you're fighting in Vegas, i okay. <laughs> but... I'll try and convince him. I'll say, listen, you know, believe in me as I believe in myself. And yeah, 10,000 might travel over there, but 65,000 will feel Anfield, you know, in the ground and, 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 and sitting and seats, maybe more. So I know I can fill that shit out, trust me. Is the title shot not the one in Anfield, though? Maybe, but listen, I'm not going to sit here and say, I miss, for starters, I miss weight, so I don't feel like I deserve a title shot. Anyway, I missed weight. So there you go, right away. I don't deserve it, uh, the next shot of the title. Still feel that Stephen probably deserves it. Maybe I, whoever wins out of the interim, maybe Stephen or Usman, they they deserve it more. I, I've just said this. I'm a fucking realist, and, and I'll always stay 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 this way. I still want to beat them all in the division. You know, I want to come back. I want to put that weight thing behind me. I mean, it is what it is. But I'll try and speak to Dana. I'll, I'll convince him as best as I can. You know, with me me nice little scouse charm, and see where it goes. Final one from me. In the last kind of 24, 48 hours, can you just say a few words about um, Mr. Cabon, Colin Hare, and what he's done for you to keep everything together? Uh, Colin doesn't say much. Colin doesn't have to keep anything together. Colin just says little pieces and little words of wisdom, and it just motivates you and keeps you positive. He's a phenomenal man. Uh, without Colin, none of this happens, you know what I mean? And Colin is the main fucking man. Where is he? I call. <laughs> Darren, you mentioned um, how you thought that Stephen would anticipate that you'd come out the aggressor in the fight. I'm, yeah, I'm fucking most of I'm sorry. It's all right. It's all right. Feel. Uh, <laughs> don't look at me fat belly. It doesn't make weight. <laughs> yeah. So he anticipated that you would come out as the aggressor during this fight. Yeah. What actually happens is you outstruck him in a really technical stand-up fight. Is your goal? When you step into the octagon to show how diverse you are as a martial artist every time you get in there. Good game plan, isn't it? I said I was going to finish him in the first and through the rounds I could see him thinking, why isn't this little bastard running at me? And and, and I had it all figured out. As much as it was me trying to figure him out and him trying to figure me out, it was was crazy. It was was Muay Thai versus Karate. karate. You know, he he tried to take me down at one point and I, 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 I stuffed it when he was in that back up, but... I was trying to figure him out as much as he was trying to me. I, I was I was faking the left, but I, I wasn't throwing the left. I wasn't wasting no energy with it because I knew he wouldn't be there. He's so good with his head where he goes. And sometimes when I had, I had him on the octagon, I'd open my hands up, you know, to make him think that I'm bigger than what I am. That's what I try and do. But listen, it was five rounds of each other. I, I said this. I put a tweet out there after a big cowboy. I said what a chess message match it would be. And it was, because, as you, the people said, everyone's debating on Twitter. You know, I'm not on Twitter, but I can imagine that I'm getting hated on for missing weight, and, you know, 50% are saying him and 50% are saying me. I, I won the fight. I, I did win the fight, but it was close as ever. He yeah. makes guys... When he's at his best, Stephen Thompson, he really does make guys freeze up in there. Mm. The fight with Rory McDonald being a, a key example of that, was that a fight that you studied going into this one? I don't study fights, mate. I, just, I, I study my opponent when I'm in there. That's what Colin's for, Mr. Carbon. I, uh, when I get in there, I feel it and how it's going. If I felt like the, the finish was there in the first, I definitely would have went for it, but it wasn't. He's, he's too fucking clever for that. Everyone who's fought him knows but Woodley's had 10 miles on him. Mm, he's too clever for that shit. He, you can't lunge in on a guy like Stephen. He didn't hurt me with anything, you know what? I think I poked his knee in, in, in the face, but like you know, I tried to be a little bit of do a bit of karate myself, but I'm shit at it. So, <laughs> but he he's too clever for that shit. He's too in the gym. It's different, you know. We're not in a fight, but in a fight, you've got to be very 
calm and collected. And I think I've just shown maturity in, in fighting years. Then I'm only 25, but I was very mature. He's 10 years my older. During the post-fight speech, I'm not going to repeat what you said, but you did say something along the lines of who is... Punch. No, not, not, not that one. Okay. <laughs> uh, you said something along the line of uh, who is Darren Till. Now, is the, the doubters out there, are they a key motivation for you in terms of rising to the occasion on events such as this? Yeah, no. I, I don't wake up every morning, you know, thinking who, who's a hater or, or this or what. Every morning I wake up, I want to do me, me coach proud and, and myself. I, listen, I'm in this for myself. I, I start out as a fight to be the best for myself, not no one. You know, when you hear fighters talking, they're like, my goals have changed because I've got a daughter and that. Well, you're wrong, mate. It's got to be for yourself. You've got to do it for yourself. To, to, you know, and, and I'm doing it all for myself. As much as I'm doing it for them people, it's, it's still, it's all about me. And Yeah, I fucking hate doubters. I hate them with a passion. I especially hate the, the, the fighters and that, that they doubt me. You know, I think every fight that the fighter in the UFC that they went to predicted one the boy would win. <laughs> well, fuck you. Look, now, yeah, it was a close fight, but... I still showed me worth, you know, maybe now just stopped out me a little bit less, you know, and there's no disrespect to Steven, I've just said I still think he deserves a title shot more than me, and I've just beat him, but I just don't like getting doubted, I don't want people saying this kid just come on the block and he thinks he's this and that, I don't, I just say I'm the greatest because I believe I am, that's all. With you continuing to stack up the wins and your profile keep rising, uh, you're undoubtedly going to become a role model, role model. You, you probably are already a role model in the city, um, your language is undeniably colourful. Do you feel like sometimes you might have to tone that down a bit? No, that that it's it's, it's an exp- it's a word. It's just a word, right? It's it's expressive to, to how passionate I am, and uh, you know every time I'm going for interviews, Till, can you say not say this and not say that? And I say May- maybe I don't know, and then it comes out like Tourette's. So do you not do you not think that? TV network stations are going to be like absolutely bricking it when you're going to be coming into studios now. Maybe, but they got a choice. They can have me on or not. I, it's, it's no skin off my nose. I, I don't want to be a celebrity. I don't. You know, you can give me an interview. You can't. I, I, I don't care. But it, it's just an. Exp- it's. I'm just so passionate. That it, 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 it's it, for me. It's just I'm so passionate about it, and I don't think when you know I, I swear words coming out of me, I shouldn't say this. I'm just passionate, and and, and that's what comes out of me. And maybe I might have to tone it down, but. I'm not going to. Cunt. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hi, Darren. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the parts of the agreement uh, for making the fight happen after you missed weight was you making uh, 188 pounds yeah. uh, just af- right before the event. Uh, was it a um, challenge for you? Uh, yeah, it was because uh, I've got the type of body. I, I don't know what it is. Uh, I, I, as soon as I'd, I'd missed weight... Started hydrating again and that, and me, me weight just shot right back up. I went back to, I, I think in kilos, I went to 88 and I had to weigh in at 85.2. So that was the night going to bed. So last night I had to starve myself and not drink. And this morning, didn't I, Colin? I, I, I went and trained. So I, I went in the gym and done 45 minutes hard training. To, to You know, I want, this is how much I wanted to fight. But I say it again, I'm not going to stop. There's no excuse for missing weight. I'm truly ashamed by it. I don't like it. You know, it, I feel like my win could be a little bit more right now if, if I'd made weight. I, I'm, ta- I'm, you know, I'm taking a bit off. No matter what, win, lose or draw, I'm still taking a bit off because I, I'm ashamed by it. You know, I am a professional man and I'm, I, I've, as I've said, I'm a big guy for the weight and I've, I've got to get it more under control. And I, I've made weight before. I made 170. Like I, I had a coke before my last fight, my last weigh but I've just got to get it more under control now. It's just another thing. And, and you know, adversity, bad or good, I'll face it. Did you feel any inconveniences inside the octagon uh, cause of, because of this uh, 188 limit? Yeah, I did, but I just don't care. Honestly, I just I just do not care what happens. I mean, I, honestly, I just don't care. I, uh, when I'm inside the octagon, it's all blank. It's all it's all different for me. N- nothing affects me. N- nothing affects me. So, yeah, I said to my coach before I was going, I said, oh, I've got an headache. I said, I feel a bit tired. I said, I don't feel, you know, the same, but when I'm in there, it's, it's all that confidence, all that confidence that I've got, and I know I'm confident. So, Darren, this is a big sports uh, weekend for uh, for Liverpool, but you know, uh, Real beat Madrid, and then Mali lost her fight. Yeah. Which almost made it so that all the expectations and hopes were laid solely on you. Was that something you were thinking about and feeling on your way into the fight? No, I don't, I don't care. I don't care. Uh, it's me who steps in there. It's not. It's not Liverpool football team, it, you know. It, it, it's unfortunate that in a debut Molly, Molly lost. You know, sorry about that, but it, you know, 
it's an individual sport and I was just going in there and for me whatever ha will happen will happen if I go in there in 10 seconds and Stephen knocks me clean out then it's happened you know I'm not a guy I don't care I I'll come back from it I'll, I'll come back from anything I know I will I I've, I'm only young and I've got the determination and grit to come back from anything anything in this world no matter what happens and in that fifth round you know you had him knocked down it looked really close to a finish fourth Fourth. It's fourth, wasn't it? Was it the fourth? Fifth? Fifth, yeah. Uh, I've lost my head. <laughs> uh, yeah, what was going through your mind when you saw that? Did you feel like the finish was close? And Yeah and no, because uh, Woodley had him knocked down a few times. Stephen recovers very quick because he's very fit and this and that. Uh, listen, this fight this fight for me wasn't about finishing Stephen. It was about being more of a, a smarter fighter, which I feel like I was tonight. So, five rounds... Easy, easy. Wasn't tired. Five rounds in the bank against, in my opinion, still the number one in the world. He's, you know, just said that he's, he just still deserves more of a title, an interim title shot than I do. So, hats off to him. And as you mentioned, it was a very close fight, and we did actually see some some very controversial scoring earlier in the night. Mm -hmm. uh, even Dana mentioned that he felt some uh, some of the scoring was very off. Uh, were you at all worried once you were reading up the judge's decision that he would get it? If he was going to get it, he was going to get it. It's as simple as that. If he would have got it, he would have got it. And if I would have got it, I would have got it. I've just, you know, I said to him after the fight, I said, we need to do it again. And he said, yeah, definitely. And right now, you know, his coaches are probably in his ear saying that he won the fight. He's probably convincing himself. And, you know, I'm sure I'd do the same. But I won. I think I know I won. I think I did edge it. Just on how I moved around the oct octagon, I cut him off. Any, any dead throw, he... he it was nullified. It wasn't hurting me. It was defended. It was so. I think it was a close fight, but I do think I won. And finally, uh, finally, when you actually did get the the win, official. I mean, the, the stadium erupted. Yeah. It was it was hurting ears. Yeah. What was? Can you describe at all what the feeling was like to win in front of your hometown like that? And not right now because you're just getting dragged from here, there, and everything. And you haven't got a chance to breathe. You know what I mean? Like, I think. Later on in the week, I'll be like, oh, I've, I've just gone five rounds with the, the number one in front of me hometown. And, 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 and I'll look back on the interviews and, and, and the way the fans cheered. They're all, they're all my friends in there, you know what I mean? Half of the half of that, I could see them, they were all my friends. So, yeah, it's, it's sort of one of them moments you have to live it when, when it's done. Right now, I'm just, it's all like that to me. And there's a lot of goods, there's got a lot of ups and a lot of downs. You know, obviously, the down is me missing weight, but still, shit happens. Thank you. Thanks. Darren, over here. Uh, you spoke, obviously, about the atmosphere tonight. Um, but how do you remain to stay calm in a situation like that? And, and do you block out the crowd? Were you aware of the crowd during the fight? Uh, yeah, I was definitely aware. But I'm just... I'm an, I, <clears throat> as, as short as my career has been in MMA, I, I, when I was only a kid, I was off travelling all around the world on my own, you know, with my backpack, fighting anywhere I could. I fought all over. I fought in Malaysia, fought in Canada... Thailand, so many places, you know. So I just, I'm just a calm, collected fighter. I just, I like, I like nerves. I like, I don't have to get myself angry at anything because that's not my way to fight. You know, I know some fighters, for example, should we say Diego Sanchez has to get really angry before a fight. For me, no, it's just all about being calm and being the more intelligent fighter. And you know, Stephen is so intelligent, and tonight I outsmarted him. I did. And Dana said that he obviously wants to take you to Vegas, but ideally, when would you like to get back in there next? I haven't got any injuries. I, th I think I broke my toe. I don't know. It. I, ca I can't really feel it. So, but I don't know. I, um, soon, I want to. I want to fight soon. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Uh, I've just said I want to try and convince Dana to bring Anfield Stadium. So if I have to wait longer, while he promoter or whatever. You know, because I'm saying while he promoted, I'm already manifesting this shit. It's already happening in my eyes, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, August, September, that until there's someone else on Fields Stadium. I can already see it happening. That, that's the key to it, manifestation. Darren, to your right. Yes, brother. You're right now. Um, obviously, this was one of the craziest fight weeks, I imagine, for you. Can, yeah. you. can you kind of, I don't know, give us an idea of how difficult it was and was there ever any time you were mentally in a state where this might not happen? 
maybe maybe when I miss weight and then they were talking about me weighing 188, I was like, hard. Oh, that's that's hard. Not that I'm a guy who goes crazy because I, you know, we eat a lot and high data lads just 188 from 173. It's not it's not a lot of weight. So yeah, I was worried and and then I just thought, you know, I have to train this morning and 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 make that that next. I didn't make the first time. I made the second time at 188. So yeah, I was a bit worried. At that, but as I said, you know, it's adversity, good or bad, I'll face it. And right now, probably more people are hating on me than like liking me. You know, I, I bet a lot of fighters are jumping on that bandwagon to hate on me, and that just shows their weakness in my eyes. You know what I mean? It is a part of the fighters have missed weight. You know, just just recently, uh, I think Kevin Lee missed weight, and do you know what I mean? It, it does happen. I'm just I'm truly embarrassed by it. But what can you do, mate? It might be a little difficult for you now just after this win, but, I mean, you've had so much time in the spotlight ever since October. Would you like a bit of peace now? Would you like people to perhaps, you know, just give you a few months to, to deal with it? I don't know, I get, I get peace when I want peace. You know, I'm I'm not a, an out-there guy. I know I get a lot of attention and, and the spotlight is on me in English MMA, should we say, but it's not like a thing that I'll have to say, oh, I'm, I'm tired of interviews or... I'm tired of this, or I'm tired of that. I'm not tired of any of it. I just, I, I, uh, my mental state gets me through anything. You know, it's going to be a long, I'm 25, I've got 10 years left. It's going to be a long 10 years, and then maybe maybe I will sit back. I don't ever want to sit here and cry because I've done 100 interviews or I've took 5,000 photos. I just want to, I want to be able to stay strong and do it all, do it all. And just lastly, um, obviously, you manifested this night, uh, as you said plenty of times. You said you were going to bring the UFC to Liverpool when you were kind of standing in the octagon tonight, was it everything you thought it was going to be? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, had, I was looking up at the, the TV screen, just seeing myself in, in black shorts. And at that, at that point, I wasn't really thinking about the fight. I was like, oh, my God, I'm inside here. My nerves have gone. I was like, oh, I just need to look around and, and enjoy this. And then he was coming out, and I was like, OK, right, let's fight it. But, but, but I, I've just never seen anything like that. I mean, I, the guy from the Echo was just texting me, and he's like... I don't, we've never seen anything like that in our lives, do you know what I mean? So, it's good, mate, it really is good. I'm, I'm truly, it's made me emotional. I might start crying. I won't. Don't worry, mate. Darren, you just beat the number one contender in the world, and there's no way with the things that have gone on that you can honestly say that you are 100% there 100% of the time for the last four days. Mm. So you've beat the number one contender, arguably not at your very best. Mm. Maybe my question is more for the coach than for you, but just how much just how much better can you get? Because the potential seems limitless. My coach did say that. He said, look what you've just done. Didn't you call against you know, the number one and you weren't at your best? But you know, as much as my coach said that to me, I've just said it. There's never an excuse. It doesn't matter if you're at your worst or your best. To me, the mentality I've got is on fight night, no matter what happens, if, if I pull a knee or he pulls a knee or whatever, your big hand, the better man always wins in my eyes. I don't want to ever leave a fight going, I should have won that or I didn't win that because there was this problem or because this problem. Do you know what I mean? I want to leave the fight knowing well, he beat me. He was the better man. That, that's the mentality I want to have. That excuse bullshit don't work with me. I, don't, I fucking hate it. I hate excuses. And I, 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 that's not me. So tonight, I was the better man. Next time, he could knock me out. He will be the better man. Yeah, this week I've had you know a few problems here and there, but nothing's happened. It hasn't changed anything in the fight. It was that until there's Stephen Thompson in there. So you never know. He could be going through things that he hasn't even mentioned about. You just never know what's going on in someone's life. And there's no excuse. Tonight, the better man won. Next time, maybe Stephen might win or I will win, but it will always be the better man in my eyes. Darren, you know, for the longest time, Michael Bisping was the face of the UFC here in the UK. He carried the, the heavy water, so to speak. Mm. He's coming to the end of his career. Do you feel as though you can be the face of the promotion here for a long time to come? Yeah, that would be, that would be really... That, that's nice. That's nice that you're saying that, but uh, I don't think of things like that. I think about being the greatest. That's what I think about. Uh, yeah, you know, if I'm walking along the street or if people are talking on social media, Dan Till is the face of... Uh, British MMA, you know, it's nice. I'm only 25. It's nice to have them kind of words thrown at you, but I don't want to see it like like that. I want to just, you know, I want, it's it's different how I want it to be, you know, because they're saying 
you know, Bisping is the face of him, and what he done was phenomenal. I hope he still has a few more fights, but it's not just one man. Do you know what I mean? It's as much as in Ireland, you know, they say it's just Connor. There's, it's not just him. There's other other fighters, and in America, there's others. So I don't know whether just be like, oh, I'm the face of British MMA, because I think that's just a bit too. I think you're getting a bit too big for your boots. Not that Bisping's ever said it, nor will I ever say it. I just think. Yeah, if you can inspire a few kids or whatever, because they're looking up to you, because you're maybe the, the most well known. Yeah, that's good. But I only want to say, I'm the face of British MMA because there's so many other fighters. But we're all fighters. We're all the face. Maybe just some of us get a little bit more of the spotlight, as you said, than, than others. Do you know what I mean? So that's how I like to see them type of things. And just one more for me. Did this whole event, the experience, kind of play out how you had envisioned it, or did it almost exceed your expectations? I think tonight, with how I picked my workout, it exceeded it. Uh, yeah, as I said, there was a there's a downer on it, missing weight. But apart from that, today's fight, tonight's fight night, and yeah, they just I just was looking on the screen at everyone walking out, and they were getting cheers, and I was thinking, what's it going to be like when I walk out? And then me tuned the right time I walked out, and then I just seen flashlights and. I seen scousers, it was just incredible and they were screaming and chanting and all the way through the fight I heard dad until chance. You know, that's what you get at a football match. You get a football match, they they chance this, you know, Steve and Gerard, but they were chanting dad until <laughs> it's crazy. It's honest to God, it's it's unbelievable. Darren just over here. Yeah. Um I wonder by mentioned before um that in the first round he did tweak his knee from one of your little oblique kicks. Yeah. Was that one of the plans going forward? And did you get a sense of that? No, I, I don't I, when I, I only plan when I'm in the fight, I only feel what I'm feeling. Uh, and I threw that. You know, just to throw him off a bit, I wanted to be a little bit bouncy myself because he's very bouncy, he's very he's so fit for five rounds to just bounce around like that. It's just so good, you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, he, he did tweak his knee a bit in the scene and I thought, hang on. You know, I'll go for that a bit, but he was onto it. He changed his stance. He's very good at changing it. Listen, I could go in. I could be a mathematician right now and talk about both of our styles. I, I, I really get into it. But he's so clever. He, he was able to change his stance, and every time he knew I was going to go for it, he could see it in my eyes, and I could see it. And it was, you know, one of them games playing chess with each other. But he, he, the only difference with this fight was he was not expecting that. I knew what I was expecting. Very clever. So good with his kicks, angles, amazing head movement. He thought he was going to get a 25-year-old who thinks he's huge and just lobs punches. Smart, that until. <laughs> Didn't work out that way. Um, so with um, like with being with like Cowboy and um, like Cowboy the legendary status from many years ago, as you saw on the on the um, on the like the Fighting Pride documentary um, from back in the day. Do you think there is like there is like a bit of a rebirth of Cowboy? I know you've got guys like Mike Grundy and stuff who are who are like who were pretty much ready to be called up to the UFC. Do you think this is still like a bit of a rebirth of you guys? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I totally agree. Uh, for starters, Michael Grundy deserves to be in the UFC more than more than myself. That that man is the most hard-working, honest man I've ever... He's, he's here right now. I don't, he's I'm not going to start crying, are you, mate? You know what I mean? But, to, <laughs> you baldy bastard. <laughs> Sorry to everyone who's got bald there. <laughs> but... To, to just to just put it out there dead quick, he's he's just so he's just there for you. You, you know what I mean? Like, I, yeah, I was struggling to make weight on that night, and he was there. He was sleeping in the gym while I was back and forth dealing with some problems, cutting weight. He, you know, he just does more than enough. That man just deserves to be in the FC. I can't say it enough. You know, and he could beat he could beat everyone in that division. He could. He could honestly, I train with him every day. He takes me down. He beats me up. But yeah, rebirth me because when I started, Carbon was. Amazing seven UFC fighters they had in that gym. I was just looking and I was just like a 17 year old kid. And I was just like, I had Terry, t- t- the first sparring session ever done. Terry dropped me with two body shots and I was like, I will get you back. I'll get you back. But yet, right now, Carbon is getting more, more reg- recognition, well more than it deserves. It's the best team in the world, the coach, the people. We are a team. You know, if you're not a team player in there, go somewhere else. We don't want you. If you've got a bad attitude, if you think you're bigger than, than anyone, go somewhere else. That, that's 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 the mentality we have at Carbon and, and Colin puts into all of us, and, and it works. You know what I mean? It's. I say this all the time. I could have it, no training partners as long as it's me and Colin. Things are fucking fine. After all, do you think uh, this was the toughest fight in your career? It, no, it, no, it wasn't. It was it was very hard to figure out. But no, I, I've had tougher fights before where I've been brought into the trenches and 
knocked down and, and stuff like that. So definitely not my toughest fight, but the, by miles my most hardest to work out. I said it in the octagon that that man is the hardest fighter to work out. He's a hard fight in, in that sense. Not as you know, because he didn't pressure me, and, and you know, it didn't. It was just it's the different type of fight. It's just it's, I can't say enough how tricky he, he is to figure out. You know, we had a kickboxing guy in the gym, karate kickboxing guy. And he, I figured him out quickly. It, we had some good rounds of sparring, but Stephen still so head movement angles that you have to be on your guard with that man. So good. We mentioned that before. Uh, then I said he he is planning to uh, make you on the card in Vegas. Uh, just as you go to Vegas before the fight, uh, do you have some plans? Cut rooms or in just a UFC gym. Just, you know, as much as it's nice. You know, to go to the other teams, it's it's Team Carbon, it's Team Carbon. We, we, you know, we've never really been affiliated with anyone, and we never will be. It's, it's us against the world. That's how I see it. It's us against the fucking world. Yeah, thanks for thank you for everyone coming here. up right now everybody's debating you know oh, yeah. to have a school my phone's going. blowing up everybody's texting me robbery till one this and that so it's one of the, the, after the fight they all looked at me and said who do you think won i said i have no idea every round was so close you know when you have rounds that are so close you almost sort of lose track of scoring and and trying to figure out who won it was it's you know it's a, it was a tough fight to score Darren Till seems like a star in the making. I mean, undefeated, he's, he's got kind of that X factor. Obviously, it was great in Liverpool this week, but the weight issue, certainly a big issue. So, you know, give me that. It's idea. only happened one time. Right, it's happened only one time, and he has an excuse for it, but I'll let him tell you why it happened and, and what went on. You know, I don't think it's my place to talk about it. So um, I'll let him tell you when he comes in. Okay, so that would be my question, because obviously he looks in line for a big fight. He wants big names. You do feel comfortable with him that, hey, he can make welterweight, and we, and we, we can use this kid. I do. I do. Hey, Dana, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Very well, thank you. Um, what about, he's been talking about wanting to bring a stadium fight to, to the UK. He's obviously got a lot of heat behind him. You know, he's a tremendous young man. But there's a history of our best fighters going over to Vegas, going over to America. To he's going him. to Vegas next, buddy. I hate, to, I hate okay. to break your heart, but he's going to Vegas next. Yeah. That's I don't know hear. when or where he'll, you know, when or who he'll fight, but... Probably bring him to Vegas next. So it's not a title fight next. He hasn't earned that yet. Um, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Right? I don't make fights the night of the fights. So off the top of my head, I have nothing for you. Do you have the feeling that this, the, 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 it's going to be a groundswell of Brits traveling over like the Irish travel for McGregor, like they did for Ricky Hatton? He's got that kind of working man, blue-collar feel about him. Do you know this guy is going to bring lots of people to America? I don't know that, but uh, I wanted to do this fight here. I, it's what I wanted. You ask any of my matchmakers, they'll tell you this is the fight that I wanted really bad. And, it, it, you know, the atmosphere, nobody supports their people, man, like the English and the Irish, it's, it's, it's incredible. It's very cool to see. It's fun. I mean, the soccer game yesterday is, is, is you know, for, for these two events back-to-back -back and the amount of people, and it's, it's, it's so cool to come over here. We have a whole setup now at the UFC where I can run the shows right from the office. I'm like, fuck that shit. I'm, go I'm going to England, man. I want to be there in Liverpool for this fight. I wasn't missing this for nothing. No. Absolutely. He absolutely could have. And uh, him, his father, his camp, all absolute professionals, and, and I have nothing but respect for them. They, uh, yeah, believe me, th there's plenty of guys on this roster that would have uh, bailed uh, on that fight. And, uh, you know. I have a ton of respect for him, and obviously we'll we'll do everything we can to to give him what he wants and um, in his next fight. What do you think? Might obviously without naming names because you, you know you don't do that in press conferences. But he fought. Uh, he's number one contender. Was number one contender. Fought a guy lower in the rankings than him, and has lost a lost a decision. There's an interim title fight doing the rounds. There's obviously Tyron as a world champion. What do you think the next logical move is for Stephen Wonderboy Thompson now after today? 
Uh, you know, there's still a lot of guys in, in that division that uh, we'll see where he ends up in the rankings. But, we'll, you know, there's still a ton of guys for him to fight in there. And, uh, you know, he, he lost twice to the champ, you know. So he's one of the, it's one of those situations where, you know, he got to take on all comers, you know. He doesn't have a title shot lined up anytime soon. And uh, But now that he's fought this fight, he could fight another one of these guys and get right back to the top again immediately. Okay. He's talented enough. One more from me. Um, you've got an active champion in Tyron Woodley who's looking to come back. You've got an interim title fight uh, in, in the makings. That's coming up soon. Are you, is the plan to convert that interim title into a unified title, or are you going to give that a bit of a life of itself as well and try and perhaps look at Darren as a potential interim champion and, and stick him in there with the winner of that fight? I honestly don't know right now. Right now, you know, get home, play out the rest of this month, see what happens in these fights that are coming up, and then uh, we'll, we'll figure out what's next for, for, for Till and for Wonderboy. Cool? Just, just one last one for me. <clears throat> Down at the front here, Dana. To your right. Hey. Hey, um... Have you spoken to Darren or Steven since the fight? I'm, I'm wondering uh, if they talked to you about the decision at all, or, or what do you plan to say to Darren? Because obviously he's had a hell of a week. No, not not yet. I ha I haven't. I just saw Till out there doing his interviews, and I congratulated him. But I haven't seen Wonder Boy yet. And uh, you know, I'm sure th cause there's because there's so much controversy over the decision um, both ways. I'm sure I, I I can I can assume what side the, you know they're they're feeling right now. Like like they, he got the hometown um, decision, but there were a lot of messed up decisions on this card tonight. I mean, some of the scores on some of these fights were absolutely ridiculous. So I have to have. Um, uh, Ratner, take a look at that when we get back to Vegas, some of these scores tonight. Um, but I honestly, you know, I always tell you guys the truth, good or bad, and it always gets me in shit with the fighters. But um, at the end of the fight, I honestly didn't know. I, they, I was like, I don't know, man, this fight can go either way. All the rounds were so close. And, you know, when, when, you, when your style is counterpunching and both guys were sort of counterpunching, but Till did keep moving forward the entire fight and was pressing the action and, you know, there's so many different things, and people judge in different ways. So, tough fight to score. Close, close fight out there tonight. You know, real, real tense back and forth uh, throughout the 25 minutes. Uh, a lot of controversy. People debating. They didn't like the scores. You know, who won? Give, give me your take when, when you heard the scores read. Um, you know, I knew it was going to be a close fight, but I thought I had edged it out. Um, you know, he's, he's a big boy, man. He's hard to move around. Didn't move anywhere. Came forward. Uh, tough guy. Can you talk about how your execution was versus the game plan? I mean, it, it looked like so you didn't want to, you know, necessarily just go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them, but, you know, kind of ducking in and out, having some success. But talk about kind of what you thought you would need to do and, and how it executed tonight. Yeah, I mean, uh, I felt his, 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 you know, the weight behind him right off the bat. I mean, he's a big guy, got some, uh, some big legs, kind of stood there, you know what I mean? Every time I would blitz in, he would just kind of meet me in the middle. Uh, so it kept me on my toes. Um, I got a straight in kick to my left knee right off the bat around the first round, so that kept me from moving. And, uh, you know, hopefully it's not too messed up. But, uh, um, yeah, man, I mean, yeah, disappointed, obviously. Going to go back to the drawing board and see where we go from there. Tough situation, and then you've been universally praised for being a professional and, and how, you, how you handled everything. But, I mean, now that you know you, you lost and it didn't go your way, is there any part that goes, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have gone in there? No, nah, not at all. I mean, even though he didn't make weight, I mean, it's in his hometown. I love being here. I love the fight game. You know, I love to put on a show for everybody uh, that came out, um, you know, for the, the people who helped get me here. So uh, this is what I do, baby. This is what I do. And last thing for me, uh, Dana was just here, and, of course, you know, he, he said he appreciates what you did. And, uh, you know, he said, listen, whatever Wonder Boy wants next, we'll get it for him. I know it's incredibly early right now, but do you know what that might be, date, location, name? I mean, wh wh what does make sense for you moving forward after this result? You know, um, I don't know, man. I, I want to see what happens with the RDA and uh, Colby Cummington uh, fight, and we'll go from there. So um, um, we'll, we'll talk to my coaches and see uh, who's next, but those two is what I'm looking at.
Stephen, just over here. So, buddy. Um, how, in that fifth round, how hurt were you? Or were you just dazed for a minute? Yeah, I was dazed for a minute. I was definitely going in all the way down. Just smoked me right, right on the back of the head here. I uh, went down, been hit there before, but recovered well. Uh, got right back up to my feet. So it, I, I, didn't, I didn't go out. It just kind of, my legs gave out a little bit, and that was it. So, uh, um, you know, it uh, staggered me a little bit, but I didn't, I didn't black out or anything, you know. Um, uh, but, yeah, man, I mean, I, I finished the round okay, I thought. But um, thank goodness I was blessed with a hard head. Stephen, when you entered, just here at the front, Stephen, when you entered the cage night, there was a heavy, a lot of heavy boos going in there. Can you talk to me what that was like for you as a fighter? To be honest, I, I couldn't help but smile. I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's cool going into enemy territory and, and being the bad guy because, you know, when you think of the bad guy, you don't think of me. But um, it was cool, man. I, I knew they were out there. Uh, no matter what the outcome of the fight, I was going to leave with some fans tonight, and I did that. But... Um, it was, it was pretty cool, to be honest with you. I didn't feel like they hated me. I just felt like they were in for their boy. You know, that's their boy. He's from Liverpool, and, um, you know, it's expected. So uh, I thought it was, uh, it was pretty intense. In terms of uh, the rowdiness of the crowd, how does that compare to all the audiences you've competed across in your career? Nothing like it, man. The, 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 the crowd gets so involved. They're so amped up in Liverpool. I would love to come back and do it again. Stephen. Uh, you've been in there with some of the very best in the world. Um, how, how does Darren Till rate as a fighter, having gone five rounds with him? You know, he's, he's, very good. he's a good fighter. Um, I expected him to be a little bit more aggressive than he was tonight. Um, I didn't think, you know, he was doing a lot of waiting. He did come to me a little bit. Um, you know, every time I blitz in, he, he stood there right in front of me. So he's a big, he was a big guy. I knew I couldn't back him up, you know. So I had to kind of play the game, so to speak. Um, Landed a good, good shot in the first round on my knee, which kept me from moving, kind of doing what I really wanted to do out there, especially throwing my kicks. Um, uh, felt kind of wobbly standing on it, so I didn't throw, that kind of took me out of the game a little bit. But uh, he's a good fighter, very tough guy. You came into this as a number one contender. You were kind of assessing the rest of the division, where you would perhaps move on after this. Now you fought Darren. Where do you feel that Darren slots in? amongst those guys at the top of the division? I don't know, man, to be honest with you. I mean, he is a tough guy. Are there better strikers out there, better MMA fighters? I think so in the top ten. But, um, um, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. I think he'll, uh, you know, um, have to prove it again to, you know, to work his way up. But, uh, you know, in my eyes, he's, a, he's a definitely a very talented guy. And final one from me. What was your overall experience of fighting in the UK? Oh, I loved dealing it. with the British fans? I loved it, man. The fans, as soon as I stepped off the plane, the fans have been nothing but amazing. Very welcoming. Of course, I knew it was going to be different tonight. But even with that, even hearing that, it didn't bother me one bit, you know. Um, um, it was pretty cool. Even after the fight, everybody was like, man, thanking me for taking the fight, going with it, when most of the guys probably wouldn't, wouldn't have, have gone out there and done it, especially – the, you know, being number one and him being number eight and then not making weight. But, uh, you know, I came all the way out here to put on a show for everybody here, and I was going to do that. Uh, hello, Stephen. Two judges uh, made on the scorecard 49-46. Uh, I would like to ask, what do you think about 4-1 to one in rounds uh, scoring for Darren? Um, I thought I had four of the rounds. Um, could be controversial three, maybe. I don't know. But uh, I felt like I had a kind of – I would hit and move. But uh, the only really good shot he had in was that one shot in the – was it fourth or fifth round? Fifth round. Um, but other than that, man, it, it, was, it was pretty close. It, but, I, but I felt comfortable out there. I realized how big he was, so I knew how to stay on my bike and keep moving. Hi. Uh, the hesitation when it comes to taking this fight or not after Darren not making uh, weight, uh, how long time did it take and was it a hard decision? You know what? I didn't have to really think about it at all. My coaches, that's what they're there for. I just wanted to focus on the fight and uh, let the coaches and everybody handle that. You know, my coaches and my, my managers, they take very good care of me. So I knew they would make the best decision. Of course, they came to me and said, you want to do it? I'm like, heck yeah, you know, I'm, I'm here in Liverpool. Um, you know, I'm here to fight, so let's, let's do it. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, they, I didn't really take much thinking for, on my part. Right. Thank you, guys.